Hello and welcome to the ChessCreator.com YouTube video channel. In today's video I'd like to talk about some general chess principles. Now as we start to try to improve it's easy to become almost obsessed by learning openings. The problem with this can be that clearly the moves that you learn are only relevant if your opponent actually cooperates and plays in a conventional orthodox manner. So what do we do when we're faced with a very unorthodox opening? In the game I'm about to show you I'm going to call White's opening the creepy crawly attack. If you play bullet and blitz at a modest level like myself then you'll often encounter uh, strange pet systems. Um, this has to be uh, something of a rarity and I hope you'll find it interesting. Now the reason why I think this game is instructive even though White uh, doesn't play the best game of chess ever seen in history is because I think it helps reinforce some of the fundamental moves. By this I mean instead of worrying about memorizing move after move of various openings Sometimes it's good just to remember some core principles. So when faced with an unusual or unorthodox opening, it's sometimes good just to remember the principles of developing pieces, giving them scope and range, and the ability to influence the center. So let's take a little look at this game. And as I said, I'm calling this the, the savage creepy crawly attack and it begins by white playing a3 and I respond with d5 striking at the center and giving me some immediate control and the ability to develop some pieces. Now the other thing that I'll cover in this video or that will be useful in this video is for anyone interested in the Dutch Stonewall defense um, you'll see that the formation I end up with after five or six moves is a pretty standard position seen in the Dutch Stonewall and I tend to use this this pattern of development uh, with a delayed F5 as you'll see to really handle um, unusual or bizarre openings such as when white starts with H4 or something bizarre like that so anyway this game continues with the next critical move in the creepy crawly attack which is of course as I'm sure everyone can guess h3 so I play c6 just really keeping my options open um, with a general idea of aiming towards a pawn triangle and a delayed f5 getting into some kind of Dutch stonewall but I'm also waiting to see what uh, what killer blow white is aiming to deliver next and we see d4 so here I continue just really waiting to see what white does the big difference though is that the pawn moves I've made give me center control they give me flexibility to develop pieces to different squares in contrast two out of three of white's moves were a complete waste of time in the opening. We'll see this lack of development come back to bite white later on in the game. So I continue with bishop d6, knight f3 and white actually develops a piece. I continue with knight bd7, knight c3, f5 and here I'm, I'm aiming towards a classic modern stonewall formation. So white continues with another passive move, bishop e2, knight f6, bishop d2, castles, castles. Okay, so I'm pretty happy, happy with the opening. I've got everything I've want. I've developed all my pieces. Uh, pretty much with the exception of the uh, light square bishop. So 
the game continues with knight to e4 captures and recapture with the pawn now here white only really has a couple of choices uh, they can't really advance the knight to e5 because that would just lose a pawn they can't move to g5 that would just hang the knight so they have a miserable choice between uh, knight e1 and knight e2 sorry knight h2 excuse me and here they choose knight e1 now here i want you to start to look at the at the scope of the black pieces versus the scope of the white pieces if you look at the white pieces they're all on the back rank and the second rank and to some extent so are blacks but look at the scope of blacks dark square bishop it has this lovely diagonal to operate on look at this rook on f8 it has a lovely half open file the queen is on a lovely diagonal and can swing into the action either to h4 or g5 the knight can swing into action onto f6 and begin to liberate the bishop on that's on c8 now look at white's pieces how horribly cramped they are they just have nowhere really that they can go and we're going to see uh, white pay the price for these this cramped position which in part has come about because of the uh, creepy crawly attack idea of a3 and h3 so this game continued with me looking to really liberate this light square bishop and open up more lines because white's position is is just so cramped i'm looking to strike at the king before he can really uh, get his pieces coordinated so plays f4 i capture on passant bishop takes f3 and here i have a choice and i'm not sure if i made the the best move um if anyone wants to engine check that and they find that perhaps e4 was a better move um that's great uh if you do find a better move just uh, just be polite and that way um everyone can benefit from the comment but here my basic plan was i was also interested in opening up this diagonal to the, the dark squares basically looking to open those up uh, to gain even more access routes to white's king so i decided to capture and white recaptures here i play knight f6 and at this point i've liberated the light square bishop to some extent it's now free to to roam on this diagonal the knight is also developed and really the last piece of mine that needs to be developed will be the the rook on on a8 in contrast white's camp is still very cramped queen c7 and at this point i'm really continuing development uh, once again if you just look at the scope of these pieces everything is pointing towards white's king and in contrast uh, in contrast white's pieces um, with the exception of this bishop on g5 which isn't exactly uh, a critical threat um, i'm not too worried about the position so here king h1 i've no idea what this move was about and to be honest it's probably uh, a blunder because after knight e4 you can see that the knight cannot be captured immediately because the the rook on f1 is unprotected and therefore white has put himself into a rather unfortunate self pin so probably noticing this my opponent blunders and 
retreats the bishop to protect the rook and here um, it's a very quick end uh, which I actually see uh, for once I actually see a few moves in advance which is all, always nice before we go through the final moves just, just once again just take a look at the scope and the central control of black's pieces black's light square bishop could if necessary sacrifice on h3 in some lines the knight is very strong on this square the queen and the dark square bishop are a lovely battery and um, in contrast white's pieces uh, two four five out of white's six sorry two four five out of white's six pieces are uh, on the first or second rank so check king moves and I capture and here white recaptures with the bishop um, here if you're interested I think this is quite a, quite a nice tactic to finish the game off so you can pause the video and I'll just stop speaking for a few seconds to let you see if you can work this out hopefully you can okay well hopefully you saw this bishop h2 check forces the king to move uh, clearly it can't move um, onto the f file which is protected by the rook and so rook f1 is checkmate so as I said not the greatest of um, openings and tactical play from white all the way through this but I really just wanted to to illustrate the importance of central control um, of the opening particularly if you have absolutely no clue what your opponent is doing simply develop your pieces move your pawns um, to give control in the center and also scope for your pieces to develop and have a plan and just really wait and see what your opponent does um, as I said uh, this game um, whilst clearly not of a uh, incredible standard from white does serve to reinforce some of these basic principles particularly when you're facing an unorthodox opponent so if you ever face what will be called the creepy crawly attack um, I hope this gives you some food for thought uh, but more seriously I hope it reinforces some of the points about central control piece development giving your pieces scope and um, I hope it's useful so thanks very much for your time and please don't forget to subscribe thanks very much